the terror of Werewolf by Night. Welcome Tonight. into another special spooky season edition of Box Office Quarterbacks. I'm Jeff. Look at Gerald. He's being spooky as hell right now. And we are talking about Werewolf by Night, Marvel's first special presentation that dropped on Disney Plus over the weekend, directed by Michael Giacchino, who is a composer on all the stuff you probably love, all the nerd shit you love, the Batman, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, Jurassic World, all that great stuff. I love this movie. Yeah, we'll call it a movie because it is such a great throwback to the Universal Monster movies of the past. And, uh, you know, it's really violent, too, which surprised the hell out of me. But before I get deeper into my opinion, let's go to Gerald. Uh, Gerald, what did you think of Marvel's first foray into horror? Uh, very good. Um, well, don't know if I'd use the word scary, I guess, maybe a little bit. Um, but I'll put it this way. After I watched it, I did something and I used a extremely bad cliche that we have all talked shit about on this podcast. The... Um, the thing that has been around since Eternals came out after Avengers Endgame and that this is unlike any other Marvel product you will ever see. But this time it's actually true. You take out the first 15 seconds, which is the um, MCU um, song and the, you know, the Marvel banner, which, by the way, is one of the better intros we have in the MCU. Um, but you take that out and you show it to two people, one who has no idea what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is and somebody who watches everything but has no idea that this is a part of it. Um, and I guarantee neither of them is going to know that it was a Marvel production at the end. There's no mention of a Thanos. There's no mention of Spider-Man, of Black Panther, of Iron Man, of the Sokovia Accords, She-Hulk, you name it. It's not here. So if you're in it for that, like, I'm sorry, you're not going to like it. But um, this was an actual well-directed, well-shot, amazingly edited, um, practical effect special um, that shocked me. Yeah. Honestly, it's one of the most creative things I've seen from any studio in a long time. You don't see throwback monster movies like this anymore. You see like modern day slashers where people are um, stalking people over social media or something stupid like that. So this was a breath of fresh air, honestly, where you get the throwback to the monster movies of the past. They did a universal monster movie better than what universal has been doing the past 10 years, trying to launch their uh, dark universe and that whole thing when that came out. So I love this and it's so great. And the story is good too. Uh, it basically uh, revolves around this group of monster hunters who are trying to get who, what is it, Gerald, the bloodstone. Is that what it is? Yeah. So, they're trying to get the bloodstone. Yeah. Trying to get the bloodstone. Uh, after uh, Ulysses S. Bloodstone passes away and you get this really creepy Jack in the Box intro with him. That was really, really well done. And then you get the introduction of a lot of big characters uh, from the Marvel Universe, like Man-Thing, uh, Elsa Bloodstone, Jack Russell, who, spoiler alert, this is a spoiler show, becomes the werewolf by night. So there's a lot of great things in there. Gerald, what was your favorite scene or sequence in this special um scene sequences gail garcia bernal whenever he turned from jack russell to the werewolf um the scene leading up to it but also the fight scenes afterwards because i mean let's not let's not try to sugarcoat it i mean even though it does not feel like a marvel fight like we were all there for the marvel fight right we were all there to see what the hell Marvel was going to do with a werewolf in a black and white episode. And they did it all. As you mentioned, they did it better than um, what um, Universal or whoever the hell does the Monster Mash and all that stuff. Um, did it a lot better than that by trying to be campy, but not too campy. Um, there were some obvious throwbacks, like when werewolf by when the werewolf uh, jumps on top of the cage, the way he jumps. Very, you know, 20th century filming style, right? It doesn't look like Iron Man or or Peter Parker jumping over, jumping onto a, a rooftop or something, some, some shit, right? Like, it feels completely different. Um, but just that entire scene, it was a lot of fun. It was great. It was gory as hell. Um, I, I see why they turned it black and white so they don't get the TV MA rating. Um, but also my favorite, yeah, definitely a great payoff scene, too. Yeah. Uh, I liked 
that sequence as well. There, there's a part in there where uh, Jack Russell, as the werewolf, is taking out the guards and he's slashing them, and the blood splatters on the screen, and then it just pulls back, and you see like more carnage. It's so crazy. Uh, the other sequence I liked is um, Elsa Bloodstone when she gets into the maze and she's just taken out some of these monster hunters. It's uh, really cool to see, sometimes even using their own weapons against them. And I thought that was cool as well. So that those are my favorite parts. Uh, and, you know, shout out to the Ted scenes. Man-Thing, uh, who goes by Ted in this special, and just how they brought him to life with practical effects and just a little bit of CGI, but you can't even tell. I loved all the Ted sequences as well. Yeah, Ted was great, and um, we'll get into this. Well, do you mind if I go into the favorite actors or segue? Yeah, just it? go go into favorite actors. That's a good segue. Um, because um, Gail Garcia Bernal, big name, and playing Jack Russell was fantastic, and I think he's the best thing in here. But I think what makes his appearance and his um, entire role better is Ted and Man-Thing. Because the way Man-Thing, even though no actual words are said from Man-Thing, um, the way him and Jack's relationship is portrayed through, you know, just one-sided conversation, um, I it felt like we knew a little bit more than what we had actually been told, if that makes sense. Yeah. It was a very, it was like a very sweet relationship. Honestly, it kind of reminded me of like Rocket and Groot, where you have this nonverbal character, then uh, somebody who understands everything they're saying. So there is a there's a backstory with Jack and um, Ted that definitely can be explored uh, if Marvel decides they still want to go down this route uh, with horror and special one shots and everything. Uh, I'm gonna say Ted was my favorite character. Uh, he got some some limited screen time. He does come back at the end when. Uh, Somewhere over the rainbow plays and it's very Wizard of Ozzy and then everything turns back to color. And then you get that like final goodbye that was really funny with them. But uh, just like the nonverbal stuff from Ted was great. His kills were very creative, too, where he kind of like burns people alive. Uh, so that was uh, my favorite character in this movie. And Jack Russell will be uh, an honorary mention for me. But that brings us to our final rankings, Gerald. And where would you rank this Marvel one shot or special presentation, whatever it is? Hard to say. I know there's only two options, right? Um, it's a Hall of Fame. Yeah, I, I guess we have to give it that. I, there's yeah. nothing wrong with it. There was not a part in this in this hour long special, which surprised the hell out of me. Because despite how uh, how connected we are into the MCU with our group chat and like reading comics and watching all these shows all the damn time, I I had like largely avoided anything about this, um, other than I knew it was in black and white. Um, I had no idea who the hell the werewolf was going to be. I had no idea it was an hour long. I was expecting a twenty minute special tops. So. Um, it just, it continued, every minute of this continued to find ways to either surprise me, uh, maybe scare me a little bit, uh, make me laugh, um, amaze me that Marvel did that. Like when uh, Laura Donnelly's Ella Bloodstone takes the hand, the arm that she chopped off from the um, the guy in the, uh, what is it, the little, in the maze, and just rips off his, um rips off his, what's it called? The bracelet sword yeah. thing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Marvel doing that? We've. I I could find a room full of people probably in the city I live in that would have believed that was going to happen or something like that from Marvel. Yeah, it's uh, they went very hard with this special. Like if you watched it with your kids, I mean, they they probably saw some stuff they didn't, weren't expecting to see. But yeah, this is this is a Hall of Fame uh, movie special one shot, whatever you want to call it. It's one of the my favorite Marvel things ever. and. I like immediately researched werewolf by night after this and man thing and everything like that. And that's how, you know, that the movie was good for me is when I had like immediately have to go to Wikipedia and look things up. So I want to see more of uh, this Marvel horror corner of the universe moving forward, maybe bring in blade uh, to, you know, pair with Jack Russell and moon Knight is obviously an obvious choice as well. Uh, yeah, I loved everything about it. 
probably going to add it to my Halloween rewatch every single year because it was that good. And honestly, I recommend it to anybody. Yeah. Uh, Michael Giacino Giacino for the uh, director job for Blade, please. Yes. Um, Because if he can do this, he can do Blade. Yeah. Uh, Do it up, Marvel. 100%. Um, Also, just excites me with getting Blade, getting Man-Thing, and now Werewolf by Night, Moon Knight earlier this year. Um, I know you mentioned in the original recording um, for behind the scenes baseball, but um, yeah, Midnight Suns, please. Yep. We got to do need it. The, I don't need Moon Knight and Spider Man fighting. Give me Moon Knight and Werewolf fighting some people. And Ghost Rider. And Throw Ghost Rider. Yes, there. not even uh, yeah. Nick Cage Ghost Rider though. Not him. He can <laughs> stay home. <laughs> stay in your universe, Nick Cage. Uh, stay in your good. lane. Stay in your lane. Oh, Look, he's oh, in the Sony verse. He is in the Sony verse, but everything, everything, everywhere, all at once is all connected, and everything like that. So, yeah. All right. Well, uh, that has been our another edition of Spooky Season. Down. We are going to talk about Halloween end soon, She Hulk soon, and a lot more things. I'm Jeff. He's Gerald. We are box office quarterbacks. Follow us on social media, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Visit boxofficeqbs.com. We will see you guys very, very soon.